Hi guys, sometimes things don't come out exactly like what maybe you thought you were going to do, but uh, sometimes you just got to roll with what you got. So I promise you, if you take a deep breath and just kind of take it in for a moment, everything will be all right. Drawn up some plans and I've collected some material and you more than likely already know what everything is from the description of the video so what's left to do is just uh, go ahead and get after it since the price of metals gone skyrocket um, even the salvage stuff is difficult to find and uh, so these are pieces of channel from a pallet rack system. They were uh, supports for across the shelves. And the plan is to weld these together, two pieces, to make a tube shape. Um, so right now I'm in the process of cutting a V on the ends of these legs here so that when I join them together I'll have a place for the weld to penetrate into. I got the parts cut out. That's a pretty good mess. So now I'm going to start assembling the pieces that I cut out into uh, box sections and uh, we'll get back once those are put together. Okay, so we got all the pieces of uh, channel welded together into tubes and cut into pieces for the arch. I extended the axle shafts with a piece of tubing. And then we got some big bosses that are welded into this leg here and the axles will go completely through that probably get welded on the inside so if an axle gets bent uh, I'll be able to easily replace that. I made the tongue part out of a few pieces of metal joined together just to give it this shape. Uh, seems like a lot of effort for what it is but it makes it interesting. So we'll get these pieces all lined up, get this welded together Alright, going to take a little breaking point here just to show the progress of things. Got the tongue part set up here so that it can take a coupler on it. And then we got the backbone assembled and put that onto the arch. Got a couple of welds holding that right at the moment. Have the axle stubs welded in place and so I think now it's time to uh, get to the bearings and um, they're all disassembled and everything was thrown into one bag so I have to clean out the bearings and hubs and uh, we've got some grease here so we can pack the bearings and then that will get these axles sealed up so I don't have to worry about anything happening to those. Okay so we got the bearings all flushed out with solvent and uh, so now it's time to pack grease in. I want to make sure to get it into all the little crevices between the bearings and this is a high temperature high speed bearing grease. Um, I don't know if this will be operated that way but uh, since we got the parts we're just going to make sure that it's all properly done for that application. Okay, I got all the bearings packed, so now it's just time to load them into the hubs. Just start in with the back one and squish it in there. And then put a axle seal on. Then I'll have to get some kind of a either a socket or a flat. It looks like a flat will work on this seal, so I can just hammer that down and uh, get it seated into the back of the hub.
After getting these uh, installed in here, I'll tighten these uh, nuts up with a crescent wrench just to put a little load on there and squeeze the grease out and then back these off uh, until the hole lines up that's in there for the cotter pin and then that'll be where they get set and then we can go ahead and hammer these caps on to close everything up. Okay, we got the bearings adjusted and put the cotter pin in after backing off the nut just a little bit to leave some room in the bearings. And uh, now I need to put on the grease cap on the outside. Um, I just cut off a piece of PVC tube that uh, fits around here and that way I'm driving on this uh, rim around the edge evenly and uh, it doesn't ding up the cap. Okay, this thing's starting to put on some weight, so I'm going to install the tire while this thing's hung from the engine hoist. Okay, this frame is pretty robust at uh, three inches here and five and a half inches here, but I'm still going to add some gusset braces in here. Yeah, so I'll get those cut and uh, get those tacked into place. I've mitered the ends of the pipe, and uh, that's going to end up being the gussets. We'll have one of those welded on each side. Got the winch mounted up on the front of the log arch here and uh, put that on with this piece of tubing cut from the side. This is kind of a big angle for it to bolt to. I fabricated two brackets that I'm going to put onto the backbone of this thing weld on there. And we've got another one that will go back in this position. And then that will accommodate different size logs that might be put on the log arch. In the back, I welded on some pieces of metal and uh, put some log catches at an angle back here. I've got uh, a couple of pieces on here that I'm going to attach a fair lead to that came off of a small ATV. Yeah, I made these catches for quarter inch uh, load chain. So I'll just be able to drop those in there after the logs lifted up and secure it. Additional places where I can store excess chain.
reserved a short piece of chain that I'm going to use on the winch cable and I'm going to use quarter inch uh, synthetic rope on this and uh, I'll just be able to hook the winch cable into one of these uh, catches on the back here, winch the load up and then uh, attach this main chain so then this can come back off and store the winch line. I've got one of the backbone chain catches uh, held up here with some magnets where I want it to be and I'm just going to go ahead and tack it on with the TIG since uh, things move around a little less that way. We got all the brackets and everything installed so it looks like the next thing to do is give this thing a coat of paint or two and uh, keep the rust off of it and we'll get back to you once that's all done okay I'm not an expert at working with Dyneema rope for winch lines but uh, hey I watched some YouTube videos so we'll see what we can do with that I'll put a thimble in here just so it maintains the shape and puts a bend radius on this. I don't have any fancy rope tools so I'm going to use a piece of uh, welding wire that I bent into a loop and uh, end of a ballpoint pen. Well, the first thing I want to do is this 12 strand rope. so push it together to loosen it up and then I want to go through this without uh, snagging any of the individual strands 
I put uh, scotch tape on the ends of this just to keep them from fraying out and makes it easier to stuff into my tool here. And I'll pull that through until this line comes out the other side. Okay, so they call this a Brummel lock that I just put in here. And the idea is that I've given myself enough room to uh, get my thimble back in there. Okay, there's what we got so far. Now we're going to take this tail and uh, put it down inside of this other end. And you can see when you push this stuff together, it's kind of like a Chinese finger trap. Um, if we taper this line out here and put it on the inside, uh, when this rope pulls, the harder it pulls, the harder it's going to grip onto that. Plus we've got the stop up here, so it's going to be a pretty strong um, eye there. Okay, I'll just pull this out and draw it back through the middle of the core here. Okay, now I want to go down through here and pull a few of these strands out. It's actually 11 of them that'll get pulled out. Okay, so we got this all separated out. Now I'm just going to go back down through here and cut off these tails. Okay, so I've tapered this part out here. I can remove that uh, pin now. i just start at the top of this thing and pull the rope back onto itself. You see our tapered end just slides up inside the hollow part. Okay, so there's one winch eye done. Okay, I think I got all my knitting done here. I've got a uh, winch rope that uh, we'll put onto this winch in a minute. I've got a little short piece of uh, winch cable that I made up with a chain so that it can go into my catches or uh, be attached to other pieces of chain however I like. And then I also made myself a little soft shackle out of this, um, basically just for the learning experience of how to make it, but uh, these are useful if you're using one of these recovery pulleys. They can't be used with steel shackles because it would gouge up the aluminum, but these are real simple devices that uh, simply go onto themselves with a knot like that and uh, they can pull some pretty heavy loads that way. For the winch I'm just going to put this on here and uh, I'll just do a clove hitch on this thing. That'll pretty well lock it down to the spool. Then I'll have the single layer of uh, cable on it so that uh, it ultimately holds the load that we're going to put on it. This eye right here is only intended to, um, to just kind of keep it on the spool. It's not for trying to hold any kind of a load. Okay, knock the rust off of our little fair lead here and uh, Shot some paint on it just so it didn't look quite as offensive as it did and put this thing back together and get that mounted on the arch.
sometimes things don't come out exactly like what maybe you thought you were going to do but uh, sometimes you just got to roll with what you got so I promise you if you take a deep breath and just kind of take it in for a moment everything will be all right. Okay, so there she is guys, um, got the winch mounted up here, got a place here for the cable to attach to so it can be doubled down onto this uh, pulley here that'll cut the force required on these cables in half, reduce the amount of winching power you got to put into the thing. Got our shackle in here attached to a short piece of line that'll be used to uh, lift logs with or it can be used directly to the winch cable to lift. Um, also we've got chains with hooks on here. Okay we got the chain catches on here. Got a couple of them so that I can move things to where I want to while we're pulling a log up. Uh, they can be hooked to different places on there to take slack out of it. I put hooks onto the chain so I can use them to uh, attach things the way I want or use the chain separately for moving logs around. So that's pretty much it for right now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you want to see more of this and when we put it to use, please uh, subscribe so that you get notified and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.